the eighth edition uh, was introduced and uh, we are using it almost for a year now we have the updates mainly in the form of revising the pre-birth questions to include card management reordering the initial steps to better reflect the common practice uh, the recommendation to use an electronic cardiac monitor earlier in this uh, algorithm, simplifying the suggested dose of epinephrine, increasing the flush volume for the intravascular dose of epinephrine, and extending the duration of resistive effort for babies with an absent heart rate. So this is to go over these changes. Of course, the NRP 7th edition has not been used currently and we are in the 8th edition already. So we'll focus on the main changes in the 8th edition rather than comparing with the 7th edition. So in terms of cord management, as we know, delayed cord clamping has a huge importance and uh, there are some situations where delayed cord clamping may not be uh, recommended like in IUGR babies or if there is any maternal bleeding concerns and so on. So to consider that, we have the fourth question. So the pre-birth questions include gestational age, whether the amniotic fluid is clear, whether there are additional risk factors and umbilical cord management plan has been added so the how many babies part will come under the risk factors itself so you can eliminate that the reordering of the initial steps is very sensible because here it was all mentioned but in a chaotic pattern so warm and maintain temperature position airway clear secretion dry and stimulate so there is no real coordinated uh, rhythm to this so currently it is more coordinated so you have warm which is receiving under the warmer, drying the baby, which is a natural response we do. Stimulate the baby, which happens usually as we dry. Position uh, the airway, which is an automatic re response and it's important to open the airway before we do anything else. And suction if needed, which you would notice when you position the baby. The use of the electronic cardiac monitor is recommended earlier. The previous uh, one was to uh, suggest that the in the baby is needing chest compression, However, in the current algorithm, when the alternative airway becomes necessary, a cardiac monitor is recommended. Uh, the epinephrine dose for the intravenous or intraosseous, uh, the flush dose was 0.5 to 1 ml normal saline previously, but many of us feel that uh, in clinical practice, we would give 3 to 5 ml. So 3 ml has been the flush volume irrespective of weight and gestational age. And the Dosage of the epinephrine has been simplified rather than saying 0 0.01 to 0 0.03 milligram per kilogram or 0 0.1 to 0 0.3 ml per kilogram of 1 in 10,000. It's now standardized at 0 0.2 ml per kilo or 0 0.02 milligram per kilogram. Of course, the range still stays. So if the weight is not exactly known, you can adjust within that range. And in terms of the endotracheal dose, uh, instead of 0 0.05 to 0 0.1 milligram or 0 0.5 to 1 ml per kilo, the dose is now 1 ml per kilo as a standard. So it makes it easier to calculate in the emergency scenario. The frame time frame for cessation of resuscitation efforts is quite difficult to judge. And obviously the most important factor here is to be clear that the resuscitation efforts was appropriately done. So in the seventh edition, it said if there is a confirmed absence of heart rate after 10 minutes of resuscitation, it's reasonable to stop resuscitative efforts. However, the decision should be individualized. And the current 8th edition says, if confirmed absence of heart rate after all the appropriate steps are performed, we consider cessation around 20 minutes after birth. Again, the decision is individualized, but you involve the patient as well as parent and contextual factors. So this is about the update and there is a separate video.